The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have gathered in your son's name, seeking wisdom and truth from him. We pray that you would bless us, uh, give us your spirit so that as we hear your word, we know your will, and then by that spirit have strength to do it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, <clears throat> the label itself, Memorial Day weekend, suggests that we ought to be remembering something. And I, I wonder if you do. Have you searched that out, what Memorial Day? They're telling us that younger people are actually forgetting why it was instituted. I expect we all, old enough as we are, remember that it is, is remembering those who have given their lives in service to the nation. What we may have forgotten is why we're doing that. Why are we? Where did that start? Anybody remember how far back it goes? Civil War. The Civil War, before it was ever officially done, uh, after the war, Confederate uh, widows uh, and grandmothers and stuff would go out and put flags to remember the Confederate dead. It was shared later, and so we remember from every nation. And, and our young people, we want to make sure that they remember, because otherwise, as George Santayana said, remember what he said? Those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it, condemned to repeat it. So, so part of that is honoring the dead, and part of it is remembering what has caused this. How do we prevent that in the future? We honor them by our lifestyle now. That's a wise thing to do. That, that's, uh, you know, if we have a checklist of things that would be wise, it would be good to remember the past. It's going to teach us a lot about ourselves and what life is like for us. We are, in fact, here remembering the Sabbath day. Now, I would ask you what command that fulfills, except we Lutherans join a small group of people who use the number three for it. Uh, for others, anybody know what other commandment numbers, depending on your church background? Fourth. So we don't have agreement on that, but we do have agreement that we ought to remember the Sabbath day. Now, remembering, testing your memory, I'm going to test it throughout the sermon here, uh, remembering then why Luther said we ought to gather. What do we gather around? Anybody remember what Luther, you could guess. So Martin Luther, what else would he say we gather around? Word and sacrament, that the word, the way we honor the Sabbath day, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy is by listening to the word. That's a, a, a source of wisdom. But, but I wonder if we were to go on the street like Jay Leno does, you know, and you, you interview and say, where, where does your wisdom come from? Where do you get experience for life? It might be experience that they mention. They might say, well, I listen to really old people because they've lived, they've made it, and so they will do that. Somebody makes 110, and a, 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 you know, a, a, one of the newspaper people are bound to say to them, well, to what do you attribute your longevity? And, and they go, ah, yeah. It's, 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 okay, so the years are going, and okay. Why did you live so long? You know, well, I didn't die. You know, well, well, well I'm trying to get something that I can take to myself. And some will say, I go to bed early. And then a 111-year-old will say, I stay up all night. One will say, I never drink alcohol. The other will say, I have a glass of wine every day, some days too. Uh, somebody says, I, I uh, avoid all fats. The other one says, you know, I eat bacon three times a day. <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to be the source for us. We might look to people who seem to be smart, 
smart and wisdom seems connected. And so we might go to certain people. If I said a really smart person, who comes to mind, of course? Einstein, maybe. Einstein, right? Smart guy. He has thoughts we can't even grasp the question he's answering. Um, you know, relativity. You got that one down, do you? I'm not sure we can put everything in his basket, though, because when it came to faith, you know what? He considered himself an agnostic, not an atheist. He knew there had to be a God, but he didn't believe he could know anything about God. Interesting. Uh, how about uh, back about 20 years ago? Have any idea what the second most read and produced book in the world was? Bible number one. You know what number two was? I'll tell you it had to do with babies. Spock. Yes, Spock, not that guy, you know, the other guy, you know, the other Dr. Spock. Uh, and he wrote this book about babying and, and how you care for babies and everything else. And, and, and yet I'm not sure I'm ready to take everything for, what do we say? Not, not everything for gospel that he said. Because you know how he, he said baby ought to sleep? No kidding on their stomachs. Because in his experience, he had had a child who almost, uh, you know, had problems because they were lying on their back and threw up. And when you aspirate the throw up, that can be a very dangerous thing. So he advised, in his book, all the people to place your baby on their stomachs. Which, of course, is directly related to SIDS, which no one would ever suggest today. So I'm not sure Spock could be. And, and these are, are you know, high thinkers and specific to their area. What we need is somebody with common sense. And of course, common sense, you think immediately of somebody. Benjamin Franklin. Right? Have you not read his stuff? Go do a Google search. I'm going to read you a couple because you know some of his. Uh, I'll give you half. You tell me the other half. Early to bed, early to rise. Healthy, wealthy, and wise. Yes. A penny saved is... You know all the money ones. Uh, some you may not know. How about this? Uh, <clears throat> I'll start it. You finish it. Three can keep a secret. <laughs> Joe knows that. If two of them are dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, you didn't know that, but you think it's true. All right. <clears throat> How about this one? Let's check Joe on this one. If a man could have half of his wishes... He would double his trouble. Mm, starting to get deep now. But some of them were wrong. You thought this was a biblical quote, didn't you? I'm telling you, you did. You can admit it. Maybe just wink one eye. Don't, don't nod your head. Somebody else is going to pretend. Oh, I never thought that was from the Bible. God helps those. Chapter and verse on that. Ben Franklin. Because that's not true. Who does God help? Everyone, everyone. Now, I know what the intent of that is, but, but if we're looking for wisdom and truth, where are we going to go? Scripture, the source of our wisdom. You heard that in the Old Testament lesson. Uh, I just wanted to read this. Um, uh, again, today's English version, good news for modern man, the old uh, uh, title of it. Um, really can put it in some interesting ways. And it's great reading, and if you've got a teenager, give it to them. Somebody new to the faith, it's a good one for them to read. I, I want to just give a little more context. You heard about wisdom. Wisdom is a crucial thing. For, uh, wisdom is from God. It was there before the foundation of the world. It is the way things work. God didn't just say, well, let me try it this way, see if that works. Wisdom was there before God created anything. And it's the foundation for life. If we could get the wisdom, uh, then we would not be fools. Here's Proverbs a little bit further. I was there when God, and this is part of it, I was there when God laid the earth's foundations. I was beside him like an architect. I was his daily source of joy, always happy in his presence, happy with the world and pleased with the human race. Now, young people, listen to me. Do as I say and you'll be happy. Listen to what you are taught. Be wise. Do not neglect it. Those who listen to me will be happy. Those who stay at my door every day, waiting at the entrance of my home. Those who find me, find life. And the Lord will be pleased with them. Those who do not find me, hurt themselves. Anyone who hates me, loves death. Mm. 
wisdom crucial. There before the foundation of the world. Have you heard that before? Some thing, some one who is there before the foundation of the world? Gospel of John? Yes. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And there wasn't anything made in creation without the word. There's Jesus, the wisdom of God, the foundation for all that is made. So we're, we're going to extend that when we hear Jesus, we're hearing the wisdom of God, the truth of God. He is the one who expresses himself and the will of the Father. That's what Christ does, expresses the will of the Father. And we hear that in the lesson. What, what Jesus is saying isn't his words. He's not a rabbi kind of reflecting on the word. He is presenting the Father. And the Father does his works through the word of Jesus. So it's the work of God that happens when Lazarus is called out of the tomb, having been dead four days. It is God's work to give sight to a man born blind, to still the storms, to bring ultimately after the resurrection peace. That's God's work. God can do that. The peace which surpasses human understanding. That's what Christ brings. So this wisdom of God one thing we know and, and we would remember as a verse beyond John 3.16, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The center of it being the truth. This wisdom of God, we listen to him. But I want to reflect the way. How is Jesus the way? Remember what he said, I'm the only way to the Father. No one is going to get to the Father except by me. You, you can't ascend to the mountains. I'm going to reveal the Father to you. God made us. That's what we understand. There wasn't anything made that wasn't made by God. And he made us. I'm always amazed at, at computer programs. I use them more than I'm amazed by them. Uh, I, I'm really, oh, wait, wait. Would everybody please put their watch up to their ear? Some, <laughs> George, thank you. It's wisdom. We have figured it out every Sunday for about six weeks. People, have said, there's an alarm that goes off at 30, 6, 30, uh, 4.30, no, what time? So, um, 8.33, 8.33. Is that must sound somebody who needs a pill. We have people sitting in the room to, to triangulate, George, we found you. Anyway, there's the truth, okay. We're, <laughs> it was, it was, all right, thank you, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it would have been my father, but he is deceased, so it wouldn't have been him. But anyway, thank you all for that. Uh, we now know the truth. <laughs> George had the watch. Okay, uh, with it. Anyway, uh, God, God made us. Um, uh, the computer program, when I select text and do command B, you know what happens? Not sometimes, but every time it turns bold. If I do command, select it, command I, what happens? Italics. If I do command U, what does it do? Underlines. I can want it to do something else, but that's what it'll do every single time. Now, the reason it does that is because of a guy called a programmer. Programmer wrote, wrote lots of lines of text and said, if this, then this. If they do that, then you do this, and it'll do it every time because the programmer made the program. There's one who made us. When God reveals his will to us, he's not trying to keep our hands out of the cookie jar just because he wants to see if he can do it. He is giving us his will in order that we know and enjoy the gift of life. Because apart from God, there is death. Wages of sin is death. This father is revealed by the son. No one's come to the Father except by me. And when the disciples came and asked Jesus to teach them, as many rabbis did, teach us to pray, Jesus said this. Pray like this. Dad. Father is kind of formal. At least I never called my dad father. You know, oh, father, he'd know something was wrong. Uh, you know, it, it, it was dad. It, it's Abba. It, it's not the distant father of all. It is dad, my dad, the one who protects, the one who provides, the one who gives me the inheritance, the one who gave me my life by his genes. 
That's who the Father is. Jesus reveals this one, the way to the Father and the truth. Jesus said, I remember it was a, a particular setting. He's been arrested. He's sitting there and he says, I came uh, into the world to bear witness to the truth. Remember Pilate's response? What's true? Are you kidding me? What can we believe? What in the world can we believe? Joe is Zuzu? You know, he was humorous. He was not believable. You never see anybody not know his commercials. <laughs> you really don't. You had to see Joe Zuzu. Anyway, for salespeople, they live by that guy. Um, he would just tell a blatant lies. You know, truth in advertising. Okay, I kind of believe that. Lifetime warranty in Florida legally is seven years. Now, now, you thought lifetime meant like forever, but not true, say. What is true? What can we understand about life? Jesus says, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's the truth. Our connection to Christ, the reason we're gathering in his name, is so that Christ would reveal to us the will of the Father, and we would know the truth. And the truth that he shares with us, anybody who sins is a slave to sin. Uh, and that's where that whole bondage thing comes from in the beginning of service. You know, I'm in bondage to sin and cannot free myself. I'm going to revert there all the time. That's the truth. The truth is it's not just in you. I notice that. It's also in me. And actually, to be truthful, I, I notice that as well. And that sin destroys Whatever that will of the Father is, the work of the powers and principalities is to work against that will, to create something else, to change it ever so slightly. We also know the truth, that Christ died for us. John 3.16 is that he died for the world, but the truth is as this meal is shared, this means of grace, this forgiveness, this is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Of all the ways to remember Jesus, by this meal, last minute, just before he's arrested, establishing a practice for all the disciples who gather in his name. Because all those who gather are going to be uh, sinners. There's going to be no way the church could remain together. There's no way marriages can stay together. Friendships can stay together. Us in our relationship with the Father, except by grace. So, as the text said, we are justified by faith, bringing us peace and hope. The life, the Holy Spirit, uh, yes, Trinity Sunday, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I have other things to tell you, but you can't bear them. You don't have the strength. Actually, the Greek word there is dynamis. Anybody know what English comes from dynamis? You don't have the dynamite to bear it. That's odd. You think like the, the Tonka toy, the strength, the, the caterpillar to carry it, you know. But no, you can't bear the word. You can't hold it in your heart without dynamite that explodes the old and brings about the new. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will bring to remembrance, yes, that wisdom of God that comes in Christ. He will bring to remembrance everything that I have taught you. And so we know by the Spirit's power, that we live in Christ and he lives in us. That means to gather in his name, to be in a relationship with the Son and through the Son to the Father, and that our requests are made in his name, and he will give us everything we ask in his name. Not as a formula, as a magic one to get the red wagon, but to ask something in Christ's name is to live in him, to pray for forgiveness to be shared, strength to love even an enemy. And that is the word of God. That is that way to live the life that Christ has given us. So the power of the Holy Spirit gives us power to love the way God has loved us, to forgive as generously as we have been forgiven. This is the life that glorifies God. I'm the light of the world, Jesus says, as long as I'm here. But then you are the light of the world. You glorify, you bring light to God by how you live and what you say and what you do, not just knowing it, but doing it, to bear the light of Christ using the gifts he has given you. You know the truth. Those talents and abilities you have, those are from God. 
on his mission for you in the world. That's the struggle and the work we have every day, whether we're retired or, or still working, is to identify how that will of God can be done in our lives. So we meet in the name of Jesus. We live in him and pray he would live in us. And we pray that the power of the word preached and proclaimed would come within us and then lead us. I pray that for us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a few moments to meditate on the word and the will of God.